One of the most compelling findings from current reading research is that children who encounter reading difficulties early in their academic careers rarely catch up. The consequences of a slow start in reading appear to accumulate over time and affect students in a variety of academic areas. Therefore, in recent years, schools have been focusing on K-2 literacy and allocating resources for the prevention and early identification of reading difficulties. In order for schools to be successful, there needs to be an integrated school-wide model in place. The following model was developed through the Behavior and Reading Improvement Center at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and has been implemented in seven schools across the Charlotte-Mecklenburg school system. What you'll see here was filmed at Montclair Elementary, an urban school where 89% of students receive free or reduced lunch and for 67% of the students English is a second language. Using the comprehensive reading model here at Montclair Elementary School has had a major impact on the student achievement. I feel it's very important as the principal that I have a, a, an ongoing knowledge of every child in my building in terms of their progress, not only just for the child, but in terms of the teachers who are teaching in the school. If there is, um, if, I, if I notice that there's a lack of progress, is it due to a problem with the child or is it due to something that I need to do to shore up or support the staff, the teaching staff. The literacy facilitator in my personal opinion is the most important position in the building as far as uh, de delivery of curriculum for the children. They not only are to have um, an oversight over all of the data as in regards to student progress but they need to know about individual um, staff members. They need to be well versed in the personnel so that together we can all sit and make those informed decisions about what children need to be paired with what staff members, what professional development needs to be offered for the staff. The literacy leadership role involves more than just selecting reading programs and assessing students. It involves being aware of all student progress throughout the year and keeping in touch with the teachers and the, the principal and everyone involved in the progress of the students. It's my job to provide in service to teachers so that they understand the overall process and we always do that at the beginning of the school year. I also need to be sure that the tutors have training and to follow up with supplemental support for them whenever they need it. Montclair Elementary has an integrated reading model in place to address the needs of students. There are five components of the reading model. Each component is related and critical in ensuring that the best instructional decisions are made for students who need support in reading. The components include screening students and placing them in supplemental programs, scheduling instruction, ensuring strong and regular implementation, progress monitoring, and making instructional decisions. We are going to focus on the experiences of the school staff using the model to make informed instructional decisions for Milady, a first grade student who is at risk for failure in reading. Milady, like all other first grade students, was screened at the beginning of the year using the Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills, or Dibbles Assessment. An assessment team has been formed to collect these initial benchmark measures to increase the reliability of scores. Based on student performance across assessment measures, Dibbles generates instructional recommendations as benchmark, strategic, or intensive. Students identified as benchmark are considered to be at grade level and expected to progress at an adequate rate in the core reading program and therefore require no additional intervention. Students identified as needing strategic support may benefit from instruction in a supplemental program which emphasizes key skills. Students identified as needing intensive support are generally provided supplemental instruction that is more intensive. For example, the intervention may provide more focused instruction on critical skills in longer sessions. 
The literacy assessment team meets to review the student's instructional recommendations from screening, along with teacher recommendations, in order to appropriately place students in reading programs. Milady was identified as needing intensive support and was therefore placed in a program called Reading Mastery. She was given the Reading Mastery Program Placement Test in order to determine her ideal starting point for instruction. Then, a group was formed with Milady and other students who tested at a similar point in the program. In addition to identifying groups of students who need similar interventions, it is important to incorporate the principal in scheduling. Linda and Mary meet together to look at the school schedule and resources. There are many students who require supplemental instruction, so it is critical at this school to consider several factors, including the availability of supplemental staff and the school schedule. Montclair schedules a supplemental instruction period by grade level in order to increase the availability of personnel. Teachers, instructional assistants, and reading tutors all provide supplemental reading instruction to students. We have strong supplemental support in place for our students. However, I need to be sure that these programs are implemented the way they were designed to make the most difference for our students. When I hold up my finger, say, get ready. Good job, Sam. Treatment fidelity plays an equally important role in ensuring the progress of students. Linda watches a lesson being taught and uses a checklist to determine whether the program is implemented the way it was designed to be taught. These checklists include items that should be present during the lesson. For example, providing instruction on each component of the lesson, using the correction procedure, and giving individual turns. The literacy facilitator provides follow-up support by modeling a lesson or providing coaching for specific components of a lesson in order for tutors to gain proficiency with the program. Another component of the reading model is progress monitoring. The classroom teacher monitors Milady's progress by administering Dibble's progress monitoring subtests every week or two. This information is critical in making informed decisions regarding instruction. I pull the progress monitoring graphs for each student and create a report every month to share with the principal and with the grade level teams. The monthly reports include the um, progress of the students, the fidelity implementation, and the frequency of instruction. We use this to help us determine other important information. For instance, the number of absences a student has, the reasons for those absences, the number of lessons, and why a student received less than four or five lessons a week. The, the monthly reports that I'm provided through uh, the progress monitoring I find are very, very important because this gives me a hands-on means of uh, keeping track of our children um, in terms of are they progressing the way they should. Are they being uh, prepared for the next grade level? Those monthly reports also give me a good handle on what's happening in individual groups with individual tutors and reading teachers. So if a group of children seem to be stalling in their progress, we can go in and look and see, okay, what support do we need to lend to that tutor? The progress monitoring reports also give us concrete uh, a concrete means of showing the parents how their children are progressing um, through the course of the year and not just that particular year but now that we've had the model in place for a number of years we can show a child's progress over the course of multiple years and the parents can see um, we're held responsible we're held to a high standard um, but we can list for the parents what we've done at each um, point along the spectrum of this child's learning how to read. Um, if there are problems with the child, if we feel the child needs maybe some extra support that could potentially be offered through a means of EC services, you know, th this is something, this is data that would support uh, beginning that process as well. So the parents have something that they can actually see in front of them that's concrete. In many instances, the parents can understand the visual better than understanding the verbal that we share with them. This is a sample of a monthly report. 
In this case, the good news is that 50 of the 59 students, or 85 percent, receiving supplemental instruction are on the path to reaching their reading goals. The bad news is that there are 15 percent who are not as successful. The literacy facilitator looks at a number of factors when considering why a child is below their aim line. In other words, why a child is not making adequate progress. The monthly report includes the names of students who are below the aim line and information regarding the number of lessons taught, the tutor who is providing instruction for the student, and a report of the fidelity that was collected. As you can see, there are students who received very few lessons this month, and this was the reason why they were not making adequate progress in reading. In this case, the literacy facilitator needs to find out why only five lessons were taught. In Milady's case, she received the majority of lessons during the month, so the literacy facilitator looks at the implementation of the lessons or fidelity. It is important that the lessons be taught with the same structure and that they are followed as written. When Linda looks at the tutor assigned to teach Milady, she realizes that Ms. Patterson is a new tutor. She has received initial training in implementing reading mastery and has been teaching the program for approximately three weeks. After meeting with the principal, Linda meets with the grade level team to share student progress. She presents the monthly report to the team and distributes each student's progress monitoring graph. The team then focuses specifically on those students who are not making adequate progress. They make the determination that Milady's tutor needs instructional support in order to implement reading mastery with high fidelity. The literacy facilitator schedules observation and coaching sessions with Ms. Patterson and the first grade team agrees to review Milady's progress again in one month. Professional development is critical to providing staff with the knowledge they need to implement reading programs with high fidelity. The school-wide reading model takes into account the need for ongoing professional development. Side-by-side -side coaching is one specific strategy used to provide ongoing support to tutors. Linda sits next to the tutor and observes the implementation of a lesson. For example, this tutor is having difficulty presenting the format for blending sounds into words. So Linda gently interrupts the lesson to provide a brief rationale for the teaching format, takes over the lesson to model the instructional format for the tutor, then turns the lesson back over to the tutor for additional practice. Side-by-side -side coaching gives Linda the opportunity to provide immediate feedback on the delivery of instruction, and she has found that when coaching or modeling is added, fidelity of implementation increases significantly. Side-by-side -side coaching from Linda Russian has provided me such great confidence in this teaching program. It has afforded me the opportunity to feel that I am giving the, the meeting all the students' needs. And uh, also, it's great to have someone available sitting right by my side in case I have a question or if I get caught and stuck in a situation, she will just kindly ask, may I offer some help? And so that has really been great for me. The first grade team is very pleased. Milady's teacher shares that she is also making progress in the general education classroom. The team makes the decision to keep Milady in reading mastery. Dibble's winter benchmark testing is coming up in another month, so the grade level team will get together afterward to discuss Milady's progress toward the goals and use the data to revisit this instructional decision. After the winter benchmark assessment is complete, Linda meets with each grade level separately to examine student progress and make instructional decisions. At this meeting, they look at the data for each individual student and discuss any regrouping that may be required. Linda then shares all of this information with the literacy team. Montclair's literacy team is composed of the principal, assistant principal, literacy facilitators, and other support staff. Milady has made significant improvement. She was identified intensive at the beginning of the year, and now her instructional recommendation has improved to strategic. Therefore, the first grade team has decided to move Milady from Reading Mastery 1 to Early Reading Tutor, a brief supplemental reading program. At the beginning of the year, Milady was having a lot of difficulty reading, especially decoding and 
um, sight word recognition and stuff like that. So we knew that we needed to get some help for her in those areas. Well, she's, she's gotten a lot more motivated. At the beginning of the year, we had a lot of trouble with behavior. So as she developed confidence in reading, some of the behavior issues went away and she, she was more self-motivated in, in her reading and her writing. I can found it out um, when I was the starring. I was cannot read and now I know how to read and now um, when I was the starring I did not know um, the words, the sounds of the words. Now I know the words and the sounds of the words. It's vital to involve teachers in every aspect of data collection and in the instructional decisions they make for each child. In Milady's case, her teacher and the principal and the literacy team all work together to help make the decisions for interventions for her. She started out in reading mastery, then she went to early reading tutor, and now third quarter she is benchmarked. And I have no doubt that Milady will be successful in second grade next year. Perhaps the most important responsibility of elementary schools is to ensure that all students become proficient readers. Implementing a school-wide reading model is everybody's business. It requires the support of the school principal, the leadership of the literacy facilitator, the ongoing professional development activities, the skill of trained tutors, and the involvement of classroom teachers working together and using data to make appropriate instructional decisions.